All right. Sorry about that. Took a second to figure this out. All right. Give us half a second. We'll get going. This is actually going to go live. All right. All right. There we go. Now I got it set up on there. All right. Now that we finally figured this out, um, I'm Josh. This is Anthony. And uh, we own Hellfire Flies, which is a company that specializes in uh, tying poppers, so strictly top water stuff, uh, salt water stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, Norvice asked us to come on, use uh, the Norvice, which is what we use, uh, show the airbrushing uh, process. It's going to take a little bit of time. We'll show you that. And then show the building the body, showing um, um, showing uh, the whole process from pretty much start to finish, uh, for the most part. Um, yeah. So where else do we start before we start airbrushing? Uh, I mean, both of us fish down in Cape Cod and the Rhode Island area. Um, for us, most of these flies are uh, used primarily for striped bass, bluefish, and, uh, alfies, whatever else we'll come up around here for them. Um, I kind of got into this because there's a huge, seems like a huge following in the Northeast for uh, plugs and uh, custom painted plugs and um, collectible plugs. And uh, there really wasn't anybody doing anything like that with the flies. So uh, I think we both wound up getting an airbrush at the same time, uh, you know, messing around with it. And uh, through some trial and error and uh, you know, a lot of uh, testing finishes and things like that. I think we were able to put together a, a pretty durable product and uh, you know, one that definitely catches fish and uh, you know, kind of just brings a little more art to the just a standard foam popper. Not that you really need it to catch fish, but it's fun, you know, and uh, they look cool. And, uh, yeah. yeah. We're having a good time with it. Yeah, and Anthony and I, we've been... F uh fishing together for a whole bunch of years and actually I met him when I worked at the fly shop that he now works at um and we fish together every day and in, in the middle of the night all the time and um kind of always uh kind of always been doing that and now we do a lot in Rhode Island and a ton on the Cape as well so um but we can talk a little bit about what we're uh what we're using and then I guess we can just start from the airbrushing it's a process so we'll show you that and we're gonna between the two of us, we'll finagle cameras. So if you guys need to, I see everyone's commenting stuff. If you need us to zoom in or do something different, just holler. I'll try to fix it as best we can. Um, so as far as the airbrushing, we'll get into that when we start that. Uh, and because the camera's set up right now in front of the vise, um, we use a, a regular standard um, Norvice with uh, the big game or the uh, the large jaws. Sorry. Um, Everything we tie, the smallest we tie is one aught. Uh, we go all the way up to six aught, five aught. Uh, so we end up kind of tying bigger stuff. So the, the jaws themselves here, uh, we like using the larger ones. Obviously, use the bobbin. Um, I had heard about them from this old guy that I fished with for years. Uh, he showed me it, and he thought it was the neatest thing, and I sat and messed with it. And then uh, there's a shop up in Maine, uh, All Points. We were just talking about this earlier. They... Uh, uh, they started carrying them, and I was the first one to grab it and try it out, and it's uh, I love it. Uh, I've tied a bazillion flies on it, so it's it's pretty neat. Um, hi from Vermont, by the way, whoever just wrote that. Um, but yeah, so I pretty much found about it at the Bears Den. Um, you know, we stock all the uh, devices and all the uh, jaws, and something that it's intriguing, really, because. It's not really like any other vice out there. Um, and the whole uh, the whole backstory on it is really cool. You know, um, I don't know anybody's ever been been to the shows. You're you're really familiar with the vice and uh, Norm there. And yeah, Norm and his speed tying demos and everything. It was uh it was it was a really cool cool platform and uh, it holds the hook rock solid, which um, which is really all all I needed to do. Um, you know, uh, it rotates on access very well once you get it set up um yeah it's just a great hook holding platform um, yeah and we'll show you it as we kind of go along because we're gonna we put a the thread we use is pretty heavy duty we'll talk about that later but it's uh we put quite a bit of tension on these things they're made for bluefish stripers albies um we have people using them for tarpon right now um we have people using them for um a lot of redfish 
um, your typical largemouth. And as some I know one of you guys is using them for snakehead. So we try to use uh, some pretty heavy duty stuff and make sure these aren't going to completely blow apart on the first tr uh, first fish. In theory, I don't know that you're going to win a battle against a snakehead or a bluefish with a popper, no matter what. But uh, um, but we do we put the the, the vice through its paces kind of to get to that point. Um, so do you want to do you want to start doing airbrushing? I'll try to set up the camera. Yeah, sure. I All mean, right. So we're, get, I mean, we both use Iwata airbrushes and uh, Iwata compressors. Um, I kind of started with the uh, the cheapest, uh, I guess, bundle you could call it, uh, the, the Neo and the Neo compressor. Um, I still actually use that for quite a bit of them. Um, it's not something you have to make a huge initial investment in, um, but you do definitely want to get a good quality brush um, and I'd say you know and I wada is gonna cost you at least a hundred bucks for the for the brush and uh, if you try to cheap out on it it you really uh, you get what you pay for yeah, it's gonna make things a lot more difficult especially you know learning the whole process um, it's one of those things where you know a hundred dollars at the beginning the brush can last you years and years I mean, I've tied thousands I mean painted thousands of flies on mine now um, with that initial hundred dollar investment um, so, you know, it's not, it's not crazy. You're not spending thousands on a brush, but I'd really want to say, you know, get something good like in a, in a water or, yeah. or a pache, you know, some, something like that. That's, uh, that's definitely like an artist quality airbrush to, uh, yeah. to start with. And you can get, a, I mean, you can totally get away with the, like a Copic system or, or one of those. Their big issue anyway is getting stuff overseas now, but that's probably everyone's issue. But, um. But there's a limit to it. Um, this allows for a lot of um, versatility, and uh, you'll see. You can. It's, it's kind of endless with what you what you can do. So, anyway, but instead of talking about that, we'll go show sure. you some stuff. So bear with us, guys. I'm gonna mess around with the camera as we kind of move over, because um, the whole setup here, um, I can kind of show you it actually. Uh, bear with me for one sec. Oh, I guess I can't turn the camera around. But we have a whole setup going here from. Uh, the actual flies, the manufacturing of them, to my TV watching. Uh, we right now have a bunch of orders going that are turning on the spindles here. And um, and then we have a booth over here, a setup for airbrushing. So I'm just going to move everything you guys will see in a second here. I guess I can't turn that around, so. Maybe let's do... Just tilt it off to the side. I shouldn't be able to hold it. Yeah. yeah. Alright, we're going to kind of mess with this, we'll see if we need to change it. Okay, so I'm going to do my, uh, call it the silver bait fish. Um, it's one of our best sellers, I'd say. Um, do you have like a version without a tail on it over there? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. There you go. This is one half, halfway done. Um, it's a silver back, um, a lot of spock, a lot of flash on there. Um, white belly, um, and it is a scaled pattern. Um, this, yeah, there we go. Um, and, uh. It looks like, you know, there's a lot going on there, but it's it's not too terribly difficult to uh, to do something like this, um, you know, right off the bat as like a as like a first one of your first patterns. So uh, you only need three colors of paint, um, and uh, yeah. So this is um, I just get these foam heads in bulk. Um, this is a three aught stainless steel saltwater kink shank hook. Um, I use the kink shank hooks because. I slit all this foam on the bottom. I don't know if you can kind of kind of see it there. Um, with that slit, I uh, fill it up with epoxy and um, kind of cement the hook in there. Um, that kink just prevents it from ever rotating on the on the hook shank. Um, I mean, th these are st still foam. Um, when you do hook a fish. Uh, one of the things we don't want you to do is to grab the foam of the popper to unhook it. You know, use pliers or a hook removing device and grab the grab the hook shank. Just because, even though that kink is in there, it doesn't mean that you can't twist the foam enough to actually break a chunk of the foam off on the, the inside. The brand of hook they're um, asking you. These are uh, these are Umqua um, stainless steel hooks. Um, I found them to be the best. Um, it, you know something you're going to take some time on like this to make or, or buy. You don't really want the hook to rust out on you. Um, uh, these hold up to multiple bluefish and striped bass. Um, what kind of foam? Or what the foam is called? Um, foam you can get from Rainy's, you can get from Wapsie, you can get from Hairline. Um, 
you can cut your own. Um, Upavon makes a uh, cutter now that you can attach to a drill and um, you know punch your own plugs through and sand them down. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things where the there's really no limitations on, on any of this. It's uh, it's more your imagination, but uh, this is just a standard traditional popper size that we've come up with. And uh, the the one thing you want to do when you're gluing these hooks into the foam is when I slit these you'll notice that the the hook eye is not in the middle it's down on the bottom uh, of the popper and a lot of guys um, and a lot of the foam that's out there has the hole for the hook to go through in the middle of the foam and if you were to do that you'd lose about half your hook gap here and um, you'd lose a lot of a lot of fish on the strike because of that so basically if I have foam that has a hole in it I'll slit straight up from the bottom right up to that hole or if it's already pre-slit I will just glue the hook in to like the bottom edge of that foam uh, if you can kind of see it it's it's right along that bottom edge that gives you a nice big hook gap it also gives you a lot of weight towards the bottom of the popper which is going to make it swim uh, the right way and not twist in the water um, you pretty much always have this hook um, acting as a keel when you glue it towards the bottom like that and like I said, it just gives you a lot, a lot of hook gap. I mean, if you can imagine, you don't have a ton here, but I have at least, at least a finger. Um, you, you can slide through there. Uh, if you were to move this up, you know, up farther into the foam, you'll cut that down to this. And that's just not, you know, straight past that huge mouth. Uh, so do bluefish and redfish and pretty much everything else yeah. you're going to be using yeah, these yeah. for. So you definitely want that gap there. Um, so yeah, um, even though this popper is silver uh, with a white belly. Uh, I start off with the black paint. Um, and um, depending on your airbrush, um, this is kind of where you know the money is well spent. If you get a good airbrush that you can push a lot of PSI through you can show me with the uh, with a decent compressor, um, you can use thicker paint. Um, the one that I use is it's not quite as nice as the one Josh has, um, so I have to thin my paint out a little bit, um, which isn't a huge deal for me. Um, but the nicer and you know, more money you spend on this, the more more paint brands you're gonna you're gonna be able to uh, to use. And this, I'm gonna just kind of try to move the camera over. Uh, does that work? Yeah. yeah. So that's the the airbrush, the compressor uh, that we're using. Um, one of the downsides to any airbrush is condensation. Um, even here in Cape Cod, it's, it's actually raining now, so it's still kind of humid out, so to speak. But um, there's a lot of moisture traps in a lot of these higher-end um, compressors and airbrush systems. It kind of makes it nice. You don't want to get water in your paint if you can help it. Um, so that's uh, kind of a nice key to like the, the higher-end ones. But you'll find it even in the kind of the middle-grade ones and stuff, too, where you can build on them. Okay, so um, I just put some black paint in the brush. Before I turn this on... Um, some guys will hold these in their hands. I have an old cheap vise that I use that's full of paint, um, just so I can keep my hand away from it. You know, I, I can kind of get it at all angles. Um, so, like I was saying, even though this is a, a silver uh, silver fish, I do start with black because that's going to be the the part of the scale that's going to shine through the silver at the end. And basically, you want to coat the whole back of the fish black and both the sides, and leave the belly white. And the easiest way to do that is to basically hold this up hold this up straight um, kind of just and just coat the back and then ever so slightly um, hit the sides and by never having the belly facing you you're never gonna have that get hit with with the black paint it's always gonna stay white um, so yeah I'll just go ahead and do that now um, and this paint um, you can find pretty much any any hobby store, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different ones out there that that will work. Um, basically, what I would say is just find um, whatever brand of paint. Um, these are all water-based acrylic. Um, it's pretty much what everyone uses um, throughout this, uh, you know, uh, foam painting and through, um, from what I gather, with the wooden plugs as well. It's basically water-based acrylic um, with an epoxy overcoat. So um, there's a ton of water-based acrylics out there. Find the one that works best in your brush. Um, stick with one brand, I'd say. That way they blend well. Yeah. That's kind of the big advantage of using a, 
a system like this versus the Copic. Uh, the Copic, you really have no option to blend colors. You're kind of locked into whatever whatever Copic has, and uh, and that's you know what you have in the brush at that time. Uh, with this, if I have uh, you know trying to make a mackerel and uh, the green isn't quite you know have enough blue in it, I'll just add a little bit of blue to the green, and uh, you know you can play with colors that way, um, which is one of the big reasons why why I got into this to begin with. Just the uh, just the way you can shade from a light to dark, you know, you can go from a yellow to a fire orange and have everything, you know, every color in between, um, just leaving yellow in there to start off with and just adding small amounts of red. You know, you, you can get every color of, the, of a flame going from yellow to a fire orange. Uh, it's just a really cool option to have. Um, so yeah, I'm going to kick this on. Let me, let me see if I can reverse this and put it over here. Is it in um, your way or is that it, okay? It, it should be okay. Okay. Like I said, I'm just aiming at the back here, letting it kick, kick down the sides. You can kind of check both sides, get a little more here, so I'll just hit this from the top a little bit. And I know it's hard for you to see, but I have the whole, the whole back coated black now, and it goes about halfway up the side. Uh, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, just to see if I can zoom in. Might just kick a little more black on this side to darken it up a little bit. All right, so that's step one done. Um, one thing that all of these paints are going to have in common is they need to be heat set. Um, and it's a big step to do. Uh, I know just from airbrushing t-shirts and things of that nature, um, these water-based acrylics can actually become permanent, permanent on clothes as soon as they heat set. So you want to do the same thing um, with this foam. If you don't heat set it, it can run when you go to add your top coat. Um, it can run if you're mixing another color into it. Um, once it's heat set, you could probably actually fish this thing how it is. Um, and not have it come off. It, I mean, it will chip off, obviously, because there's no protective coating on it. But um, it's pretty permanent on the on the foam once it's heat set. So I'm just going to do that with the with the hair dryer. Um, you know, you want one that's going to get pretty hot. Um, some people you see online will use a heat gun. Um, they're they're pretty much using that on on balsa wood and uh, you know wooden plugs and, and it, yeah. things of that nature. Um, it doesn't have the best effect with foam, so. This will also speed up the drying process quite a bit. Yeah, so that's that's all you need to do, really. Um, and this is going to be dry, dry to the touch. It's not going to come off, it's not coming off, you know, on my finger, and it's it's jet black right there. So, to get this scale pattern on here, I'm just going to put this up um, in there. And um, you can get a piece of, um, uh, like, the netting you would use off of, a, uh, off of a clam bag, like a bag of clams or an onion bag or uh, just, you know, anything with a nice scale pattern. You see how many of those three clips that I put in? It should be under the... Are you looking at those clips there? Uh, no, just... Hmm. Clips. Probably just use your clips. Here. Yeah, I didn't see any. Uh, all right. Do you There's know? a whole pile of them right so, there. All right. So, what I do is I stretch this. I like the stretchy material because you can kind of manipulate the the scales. Um, to whatever you'd like. Um, Let's see if I can adjust that. Right. Can do it. I like to fold it down halfway. Let me kind of tuck this front half in and go right around the front of the popper. I'm gonna give that a little little clip on the bottom, and that's kind of just to hold this in place right there.
I use three clips for these. I think that's all you need. Um, this back clip is probably the most important one. That's what's going to allow you to stretch this. Um, you can see we kind of got a nice tight weave going here now. Um, so you get a good grip on the, on the hook itself, pinching this in there. And then what I do once I have those two on there, I'll just get some scissors and cut this a little bit shorter so I can get another clip in there pretty easily. I mean, you don't have to do this. I just found that this makes it a lot. That's you know, one of those trial and error things that makes it a lot easier. I'll get the third clip. I'll open it up and I'll just have it pinch the belly kind of close so now I have this clip you know you get it's tight on the front you have it pinch down tight on the back we're not going to get too much silver on the belly anyway you kind of just want a weight there to kind of hold it down so I'm just going to prep some silver real quick I just need to make sure all the black is out of here This is another thing, you don't have to, uh, you know, clean your airbrush out after every color change you do. Um, if they're going to be similar colors, you can, uh, you know, you can kind of just go with the flow, so to say. Always give your paint a good shake, especially if you're using uh, paint with sparkle in it, like the silver. going to distribute the spark a little bit easier. Alright, so now with the silver, um, I'm going to do this from far away and I'm kind of just going to spray a stream and then, you know, touch it, touch it towards the, uh, Basically, you want to get this whole thing looking pretty silver. I'm just going to add a little bit more, more paint to the gun. Yeah, if you didn't get the eye that too bad. <laughs> Now, we'll heat set this with the dryer. And you don't want to move these clips until you at least get it heat set a little bit. So now that I have it heat set a little bit, I'm going to take these clips off and then give it the final heat set. And you can see just by doing that, taking that, that netting off, gives it a nice scale pattern under there. You have the black shining through, the silver underneath. I know it's a little tough with this light. And then you get the, the white kind of silver, silver belly there. You know, this is one of those patterns where the sil anything with sparkle, as soon as you are to top coat it with your epoxy, um, that sparkle really just comes to life and it you know, just gives it a whole new dimension. Um, it looks cool now, but you know, once you get that clear coat on there, it, it just really comes to life. So, you know, just that little bit, this is going to be perfectly dry to touch now, and it's ready for the, for the clear coat. Um, so there's a bunch of different things you can use for clear coat. Um, there's KBS Diamond Coat, which is kind of a one-step epoxy thing. Um, there's a whole bunch of, of uh, water-based um, epoxies you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's, um, you know, uh, UV epoxy. Um, Probably the easiest starting off with, with the least amount of coats you're going to have to do, 
would be to just get a 30 minute epoxy and a, and a, and a turner um, with the two part epoxy, um, especially if you make it a little bit on the thick side, you can usually get away with one or two coats. Um, the finish that we've settled on, it's not a two part epoxy, um, but it is a blend of a couple different things and it goes on thin. And uh, we found that after, you know, four or five coats, um, it really just lo looks like glass. Um, you know, that's another one of those things that you really mess around with um, and see which finish is going to work, work best for you in, in your environment. Um, one thing I will uh, give you for a tip is make sure you use a dehumidifier in whatever room you're uh, running your final coating in. Uh, you want that room to be as dry as possible. Any kind of moisture in the air is just going to make these things take ten times longer to... Uh, to dry and they'll dry tacky, um, they'll crack on you sometimes, um, trap bubbles, uh, totally dry environment is a, is, is a huge plus. So, uh, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the silver bait fish right there. Um, um, I'll put two coats on and then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put these eyes on, um, after that. And then, um, you know, once, uh, once those eyes go on, um, it's another three coats, um, till I can't feel the eye anymore. It kind of just gets buried in the uh in inside the top coat um and once these are out you know in the sun they just they just sparkle like uh, like you wouldn't believe and uh now you can do whatever you want for a tail um later on i'll show you how i do my uh, traditional bucktail tails but uh we'll let josh uh josh yeah. paint uh his up can keep an eye on it just sure here. all right oh what's your name all right so i'm going to try something different here as i was playing around watching here i think i can turn this around I didn't even see this option before, so bear with me. So we're gonna turn this down. All right, see if we can get a little bit better view. So Anthony does a different um, style than what I do. Uh, we consider his the, the traditional style. It's, a, it's kind of like an, o, or an homage to like the old school um, uh, plugs and, and lures and things like that. Um, I'm using more of a modern um, design that's been out for quite a while now. That's I'll show you in a second here. They're, it's made by a company called Flyman. I know a lot of people have heard of them. They uh, they're out of like South Carolina, something like that, maybe Charleston. And they're um, they make all kinds of different heads. They're uh, complete. They're still a foam. They're still a closed cell foam. Um, but they uh, they're they're finished differently. Um, they're more of a, a slicker finish. So what I do is it ends up being a little bit different than what Anthony does to finish his. Um, at the end of the day, they still kind of look the same, same finish, but um, there's a couple extra steps that I uh, found out I needed to do. Um, this is one of the uh, the heads we use. This is called a howitzer head. Uh, they're made over overseas somewhere, um, and uh, they come in a bunch of different sizes. Actually, I take that back. Right now, they only have two sizes in this one. Um, there's these also, um, the double barrels. They make those in four or five sizes. I think they have some new ones coming out, uh, the last I heard. Uh, but for today, we're going to do the howitzer ones, um, and we're going to do one that I, I don't know where I came up with a dumb name, but the Smurf Murder. I only am tying it because I think the name is funny. Um, it will, I have a bunch of them here, and I don't know where I just put them. All right, here we go. Um, this is what the end result's going to look like. Um, so it's got a pearl belly on it. It's got um, some kind of a turquoise top. I don't know the official color name, which is kind of weird since I use it all the time. Um... Yeah, I guess turquoise. Um, and then uh, we do like a red splatter on it. Um, I'll show you that. It's uh, more of a mess than anything, but it's kind of neat to look for. So um, so yeah, so I'll do this. Anthony kind of touched up about the paints. I use the same paints he uses. Um, uh, like I said, the finish is relatively the same. Um, surface prep. Uh, generally not. Uh, the question was about uh, if they need any surface prep um, before we start painting. Uh, no, for the most part, not. Um, these uh, these come out relatively blemish-free. Um, we don't have to roughen it up to have the paint adhere. The, the basic or the biggest important parts, kind of what Anthony mentioned about um, heat treating it with a hairdryer, um, that's kind of the key. If you don't do that, pretty much anything you add to it will make it bleed. Uh, so the heat treatment's the big one. Um, uh, we haven't really run into any heads that you need to do much for. Um, they're pretty much ready to go for the most part. I, I pretty much heat all the heads a little bit too before I even start painting on yeah. them. I don't know if you do the same. It yeah, yeah. yeah, so I guess it, as Anthony was saying that you can kind of preheat the head a tad. Um, 
these closed cell foams, um, I mean, they're pretty densely packed foam. They, you know, they sometimes use like a marine foam. I don't know if I'm giving away a secret there, but uh, those type of foams, um, if, if you heat them, sometimes they open up a tad, absorb paint a little better, things like that. So um, to each their own on that one. Um, so in the meantime, let me, uh, I gotta clean up this brush real quick. I know we talked about cleaning them out, but it's kind of important. And also don't leave paint in there for long, because once it dries out, it's just a whole pain in the butt. So bear with me one second while I do this. My big fear is not drying out the cup after I clean it because then you're mixing cleaner with paint and it just becomes a mess. So. Alright, so we're going to do the little bit of pearl. So give me one sec while I get that going. So I start off with a lighter color first on mine. I don't know why, I just do. Um, but uh, usually going lighter to darker, I don't know if you already talked about that, but going lighter to darker is a little easier so you can kind of mix paints in. If you go the opposite way, you're continuously cleaning them. Just preference. All right. You don't see that all right? I think that might work. All right. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a quick coat on the bottom. And I'll give it a quick, just a little bit of a spray in around the mouth. This pearl is almost impossible to see on the camera, um, but it's there. So, just believe me on that one. So, in one sec here, I'm going to swap out colors. Did I even go with that turquoise color I was saying? Oh, good. I'm glad you guys could see that. Alright, so there's a turquoise, what it's going to look like. And we're just going to do just real light on it. If you go crazy, pull down like crazy fast, it'll, uh, it'll start either bubbling up or it'll just kind of it'll kind of look like a rain splatter. It's just not, not great. So some of these dark colors will take a little bit of time to get going on. This one mixed with the pearl a little bit that I had in there. It gives it kind of a cool effect. Not insanely intentional, but it does look nice nonetheless. Alright, so if I wanted to touch that up, I could. It's This is a pretty simple, straightforward pattern. There's not a lot of stenciling, things like that. But So I think you can see the pearl just fades over to the, uh, the turquoise here. And blow the rest of that out. And then we're going to see if we can do this. So that's... That's what we got right now. We're going to do the uh, the, the blood spatter um, on it. So bear with me one sec. We're going to get the paint booth for that, which is really just a box. Let's see if this works. Oh, I think this is going to be okay. All right. So I found out about after about 100 poppers that I splattered paint on the walls. Um, we're going to do a booth now, from now on. Um, and we're also going to use a glove because the stuff's a pain to wash off. So, if you can see this. All right, just gonna alligator clip this in. Okay, get the gist there. And then, there's not a lot of secret tools to this. Um, the really only thing you need to use is a brush of some sort. Doesn't even have to be anything uh, decent. This is, I guess, wherever that is there. These are like cheapo Amazon deals. You can buy like 250 of them for like five bucks or something. Do you paint the mouth and end of the foam? Uh, yeah, so the mouth on this one is just happens to be pearl. Um, we do some that are red. We weave some that are just plain white or black or purple. It doesn't matter, but we do do that. And the back end, not so much because we usually hide the body um, or hide the head and the body together there. Um, some of them will do, uh, some like the frog pattern, since they're reversed, we will. But for the most part, it's a, um, you do kind of leave them. You do have to top coat the front and the back. Yeah, you still have to coat that, it, though. Uh, otherwise, that will absorb water and it will crack from the inside out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, and if you start a crack on the back, it just kind of it kind of never ends well. So, so I'm just mixing up some paint while I'm yakking yeah, away here. So, so this takes a couple of drops of paint, and we end up having to do it a few times to really get the effect. But if I do it right, we're gonna splatter paint. I'll have to get some more paint here. That one almost worked. Sometimes it can look really gnarly, and other times it just it's just really small. But there's a couple more. And I can almost assure you this is pretty much how everybody else does it. I don't know if it's like a trade secret, and if it is, I'm sorry, but... These are a few different ways you can do it. Some guys will flick that paintbrush up against um, something, like a, like a wooden dowel. They'll kind of whack it hard, and you can get a splatter effect like that. That's other, true. Yeah. Other guys will use a toothbrush. Um, you can uh, you can actually do it in the airbrush itself, um, although you tend to waste a lot of a lot of paint that way. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, this is probably the most common way, as, as Josh said. There's a thousand other videos yeah. on YouTube showing it, so I don't think we really gave anything away here. Yeah, so it's just a couple drops and. Uh, um, just you know, flick it on. I mean, some of the patterns can look really cool. Some of them are kind of messed up, but this one came out okay. So, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. Um, as Anthony said, um, you know, you heat treat everything with the the splatter on this. You got to treat it longer because it's thicker. It makes sense, like any paint, I suppose. Um, I, I'm not going to actually go and like actually cure this one. I have some that are done up. But so I, I would heat treat this one. I'd let it sit for a little while, make sure it's really completely dried out. Any moisture that's kicking around in there, I'm not going to seal it in because that's kind of a, the end all be all uh, to these. Um, and then at that point, we end up. Um, I have a coating I put on prior to, prior to the finish to help it out. Um, I put the eyes on prior to that, um, and then we just do the finishes. And, and like we um, were kind of showing you before, we have we have a few. We have some orders for some shops going right now. There's some more on that other side as well. So, um, yeah, so we have them in various stages of finish there. Um, but, yeah, so the end result, though, once you get... Let me get some more lighting here. That was a close-up of the light. Uh, once you get the finish on and stuff, um, you can kind of see. I mean, it's it's pretty... It's, it's quite a bit different. It really just kind of pops and stands out, which is what, what we're going for. I mean, half of our business is tying flies, and you're also trying to sell them, and they do have eye appeal. That's our, our goal as well. They fish well. We know they do. We fish them ourselves. We fish almost every day. Anthony's obsessed even more so than me, um, and go every day on the Cape or down in his case, Rhode Island, um, and, and it's what we throw. So we kind of um, we kind of combined everything, something that looks really cool and actually uh, works real well and we've been happy with the heads we use uh, the ones that Anthony's using those traditional style ones that we call them they're um, they're they're pretty knockout patterns and same with the, the howitzers the pops unbelievable there is another one that I've been using a little bit I'll show you it's still messing with them quite a bit but I've been finding them that they're pretty uh, uh, pretty productive and they they're just funky looking moving I'm just going to show you what the uh, Let's see. I'll just show you what a plain one looks like. But these are the, I think, uh, the Frankenfly, the brain dead poppers, he calls them. Um, and uh, you can swip, put them different positions on the hook. You can put them like this. You can put them like that. You can reverse them to make them dive. Um, they're really cool. Uh, I've made a bunch of um, articulated ones. Um, and they're, uh, they're funky. I'll grab one real quick. So... I can out maybe a tad. Maybe not. So there's one of the articulated ones of that. And this is just something we were messing around with uh, recently. And um, I've been chucking them. This is on a 4 aught um, Gamakatsu SL12. Um, and that's uh, and that's been pretty pretty neat fishing for stripers with and stuff. And then um, here's another one that's just, again, just kind of messing around with a howitzer head and a, a Kona hook, which I'll tell you about those after. But, um, but yeah, they're, they're pretty neat to mess around with. So. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to go start building some bodies. So just bear with me while I turn around the cameras and all this stuff here. Put the head on you know, Yeah. Swap that. Is that? All right. So, yeah, so you can see this. And I think we're good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these traditional poppers, like, like Josh was saying, I'm just going to move this a little bit closer. Yes. 
this way. So yeah, you, you can see that's the uh, that's the scale pattern right there with the with the white belly. The traditional poppers, I try to keep it keep it simple. Um, use bucktail, um, crystal flash. I found to uh, kind of work with bucktail the best. Um, you know, almost almost like the like the clouds are kind of you know combination, but they marry together really well. Um, a little bit on material selection. Um, this bucktail. Um, pretty much the ideal bucktail I'm looking for in these. Um, I do have a lot of big bucktails that I'll tie flat wings and things like that with. Um, and a lot of guys will use them um, for this style of, uh, of fly. The one thing I have found is that if you stick with the shorter um, fibers um, but still keep them soft, um, if the whole tail is short they tend to be more the same length. So you're not stripping so many um, you know shorter hairs out like some of those really long long tails um, you'll have a nice nice clump you'll take out and half the hair will be will be short the other half will be long and instead of having to stack it you know and, and getting all the fibers to line up together I, I'd almost rather for these flies find a nice super soft tail and you can see this this tail is super soft um, and it's it's on the shorter side um, so it's pretty much ideal for tying these kind of poppers um, so basically I just start off with some vivas uh, this is their power thread on um, the 140 it's I just found that to be incredibly strong and I uh, you know started tying with it and I don't think I'm gonna go go back to anything else um, I always lay down a thread base on the hook I think where a lot of people will um, you know they'll say they have their feathers spinning on the hook or they have their bucktail spinning on the hook um, and uh, you know and all and all kinds of things like that um i think it's because they're just tying it to a bare hook um you throw throw it on this thread base especially if it's a flat you know uh, wax style of thread um it gives something for the materials to bite into and it, it really stops them from from spinning on the hook um so i'll put down a base of thread and i'll just get a, a clump i'd say uh it's about a third of a pencil's width um you know, just bucktail, uh, try to match it up so it's just about the same length as uh, as the popper itself. Um, I will strip out the little tiny hairs and the super long ones. So, like I said, with, with, this, soft, with this shorter tail overall and the softness, most of them wind up being the same, same length. So, kind of just match it up like that and then I'll cut it, I'll cut it right here. Uh, And what I'll do is I'll buck this up against so it's almost splaying over the top a little bit because what's going to happen is when you wrap this the thread's going to suck it down away from the body and sometimes if you don't start off like this you wind up with a gap between the body and the uh, and the tail itself so as you can see there I have a little bit peeking out and that's fine I'd rather have it peeking out like that than have a gap um, in the uh, you know that that you have to worry about filling up with later so once I get all this wrapped in I go about just about to the hook bend and I'll throw a wrap underneath just to stop this from uh, from spinning and to kick it up a little bit and then a couple more over now I'll add the crystal flash I take uh, just regular old crystal flash um, one half of it I'll cut three strands off um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll measure these up so that they're the length of the tail. I'll kind of pinch it down on this side, do a capturing wrap with uh, you know two or three wraps right there. And then I'll fold I'll fold all of it over to bring it over to the other side. So now I have three wraps on each side of the tail. Kind of just lock it, lock it down right there. And then I'll clip this off pretty much even with the other ones and taper it a little bit. And then I'll just get one more clump of of tail fur, about the same same size as the last, about a you know third of that pencil width. Um, I will strip out all the uh, all the little guys. Like I said, just from tail selection, kind of wound up with a nice even even bunch. Line that up like that. Cut it off right there, and then again. Um, this is going to be about halfway down your thread. 
I'm going to overlap it and really get it tied in close to the uh, close to the back right there. And you don't want to go too far on this because you don't want a huge, I know it's hard to see, you kind of seeing the bottom of this, but you want it to, to kind of be, let's see if I can angle it towards you, like that on the top sticking out. And I'll do some wraps in the back to trap all that extra fur we had down. I'm just kind of building up a little dam here. And then I'll take my whip finisher. And I will. I like using the tool for this because I can place where I want the final whip. And what what you don't want to do is whip finish and have your final pull down to be right up against the butt because if that happens what's going to happen is you're going to start again separating between the popper body and your tail you kind of want it to fin place the last wrap right in the middle of the thread so with this side whip finish you can obviously you can go around the whole thing and then kind of lay it lay it down towards the back just make sure you lock down good and solid in there and then uh, we've tried a bunch of things to uh to coat these final wraps um I find that the uh, that the bone dry from uh, from Solares. Let me just straighten this up a little bit. The bone dry from Solares is the best. That kind of blends into the finish. Um, you can use epoxy if it gets a little bulky. Uh, you can use um, pretty much any head cement, but I don't really like to uh, to mix the uh, like the hardest nails and stuff with the finish. I think it. it it can really it thin. can react sometimes. Um, this uh, this bone dry, which uh, I think needs to be microwaved, but <laughs> I'll spare you that I now. Don't worry it's about just, uh, that one. just put ever ever such a little bit on there, and on the bottom too, just to lock all those thread wraps in, and you can kind of uh, kind of just make all this uniform. Um, so it just looks like a continuation of the uh, of the fly. Don't mind me; I forgot to put batteries in too. Yeah, you can. I, I think you can kind of see what we uh, what we achieved there. Anyway, let's see this. It's kind of looks like you have. The top of the top of the fly, you know, continues down right into the tail. Looks like one one piece of uh, just hard hard popper, um, and that's kind of how I just finish off all the traditional poppers. You get this nice buoyancy of the bucktail. You get some crystal flash. Uh, it holds up well. It's easy to throw. I mean, we throw these on anything from a, I'd say from a six to twelve weight. You know, um, they are a little air resistant, but it's nothing crazy. Um, and yeah, anytime there's a uh, you know silver colored bait fish with white bellies, they're, yeah. they're pretty much coming up smacking these. Do um, you want to talk about lines also? Uh, yeah, I mean, with the ones like this, with the um, with the tail like this, um, it's pretty easy to throw on a number of different lines. Uh, I'd say you need a little bit of an aggressive head. Um, you could even throw this one on the air with a little cold salt, which is probably the least aggressive out of all the uh, out of all the fly lines. Um, you know, that's got a 40 foot head and it still turns this over, I'd say from anything from an eight weight up. Um, if you use something like an outbound short or a scientific angle, of Titan taper where all the weights up front, obviously it's going to turn this, uh, it's going to turn this over even, even easier. And you might allow you to use something like a, uh, like a six weight, maybe even that with an outbound, you could probably throw this on a five actually at, at, uh, at large mouth bass if, if you really wanted to. Um, but, but comfortably. Uh, eight weight and eight weight and above, um, not really fly line dependent. Um, you know, on these guys and uh, the ones Josh ties with a synthetic tail. Anytime you start adding like a rabbit strip or an articulation or a bunch of feathers, um, you know, you're gonna need a, a little more power. And uh, I think the you know the the head heavy size yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. lines are gonna do a little bit better of a job. Um, you know, with those. Um, but just traditional lines are fine with these and. Uh, what, say like the medium howitzers and yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and the, the smaller stuff, smaller is, is stuff yeah, should be fine. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, usually, I mean, I'm if I'm fishing top water, I know I'm not going to get snagged, 
and I'm in a strike blast or a blue fits blitz, uh, I'm using probably straight 30 pound fluorocarbon, to be honest with oh, you. you got that good. Um, you know, probably uh, five to seven feet of it, um, sometimes even 40. Um, if it's all bluefish around, I'll use a three foot length of uh, 50 pound fluorocarbon to a three foot length of 30 pound fluorocarbon to a foot length of 30 pound wire. Um, if it's just bluefish, it's um, the only way to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the good thing about the top part. You're not really worried about getting snagged. Where if you're if you're fishing around rocks and things like that, you have to worry about you know potentially breaking the fly off without breaking your fly line. Um, you know, with these, I'm more worried about losing a fish than than the fly line. To be honest mm -hmm. with you, especially up you know up in the top part of the water column. Yeah, yeah. The only other thing, um, and I get we get asked a lot of questions when it comes time. Uh, comes to the company we get messages all the like, pretty much every day at this point and um one of the uh, ones we get people asking about using them in rivers and, and they can be used in rivers um the smaller ones um you need to just shorten up your leader uh or your tippet rather um and we're talking like make it three or four feet long if you're using a popper they're not going to get leader shy believe me there's enough uh commotion in the water with um the popper alone that they're not even looking at the leader um, but if you're doing it in something with a lot of current, which we do a lot as well, a lot of river systems here that hold stripers, um, especially on the Cape and up, up where you f uh, fishes too, um, the, the shorter leader does tend to work if you get some crazy current. Um, and then this, the wire spooks the striper. Yeah, you can talk more about um, that. Not, not really. I haven't found that, um, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, if the stripers are spooky, um, they're pretty much spooky whether you have wire on or not. Um, from what I found, if they're in the, you know, if they're in the blitz mode, um, yeah. I really don't think it matters. You know what you have for a leader on there. Um, if you can get close enough to the fish to fly cast to them, that's usually the challenge. Um, spookiness I find is uh, the boat spooking the fish. <laughs> um, you know, rather than any kind of leader system you have. Uh, sometimes it's just really hard to get close to them. Uh, that being said, there are guys uh, who throw these behind casting eggs with uh, spin rods uh, quite a bit, especially the smaller. Uh, there's a smaller version of this we do called the uh, the Albi Bop, um, which a lot of people have been throwing behind casting eggs this year and, uh, and getting quite a bit of Albies on them that way, just because uh, you know the, the heavier stuff just isn't working and, and you know they want to experiment with flies, so they they give these a shot and uh, they seem to be working. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's been awesome. Um, all right, well, I can go do yeah. my end of it. All right, sure. so we're gonna, I'm taking that seat. It's way more comfortable. Thank you. Um, here's a water for you, too. All right, so, um, Britt, I saw your question earlier um, about uh, the head. I'll show that, and we'll be in a, I'll kind of explain it when the time comes. Um, so mine's a little different than Anthony's. Um, mine, I end up having to build the body first and then put the head on. It's just more work for the same thing. Um, be hooked, oh, yeah. I should hold this up. So I'm using, um, these are hooks made by Kona. Kona, I think, has something to do with Flyman. Um, so a lot of their hooks fit their heads nicely. Um, I think it's the same owner um, or partners. Um, this is the, the big game carnivore hook. They come in a whole bunch of sizes. This is a one aught. We I also have three aught and five aught ones for some of the bigger heads. And um, for some of the other ones, the double barrel heads, I use, uh, they have a kink one as well. Um, and I'll show you that another time, but, uh, it's, it's kind of similar to the Umco one that Anthony uses, except the, these ones are a little bit shorter shanked. I don't need a real long, long one, um, unlike his, his, um, so the first thing I end up doing, and I've done this enough times that I kind of know where to put the thread and there's no good way to explain it, except I just want it like here. Uh, that's, that's not near the hook point. It's not near the eye. It's not a half an inch. It's just like, this is pretty much where I want it. So I'm just going to tie it in here and um, and cut it off. Yes, yes. All right, so good. I uh, thought they had something to do with them. Um, and I'm just going to bring my thread right back down to the uh, prior to the, the bend. I won't go crazy, crazy. What I'm going to do next is... Um, and this is something I've been kind of... I started swapping up my bodies a little bit. I was doing full synthetic, uh, which was good. Um, I didn't like the action of them as much. Um, I started swapping over to some zonker strips, um, still incorporating some synthetic you'll see. And the zonker strip itself, um, 
seem to work pretty well. Um, the big thing this is something Rich Strollis, who Anthony and I know, kind of told us was to um, prop up the zonker with uh, mono. Um, so that's what we that's what we do. So here's some mono. It's like thirty pound. You can kind of use whatever. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little bit, a little bit in, and I'll show you. Um, it's gonna be tough from this angle, but what I'm really doing is just tying it in right on the very top, just the the tag end of it. And I want it as straight as I can on the top. This isn't going to be anything where we're worried about the fish yanking the, the tail off or anything. So it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be secured any more than a bunch of wraps. We're going to wrap it up a bunch of times. We're going to finish it off anyway. So, um, so anyway, we got this sticking out here. This is way more than you need. I you only need about an inch, but it's easier this way. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use, um, Zonker strips. These are, well, it's all backwards to you probably, but it's the Tiger Bard Magnum strips. Um, these are blue with black over white. I don't know if this is something new. I worked at a fly shop for a while and I tied for a long time. And when you get Zonker strips, they're not always, like this one's actually pretty decent, relatively straight, but there's some that are like all cockeyed and crooked and bunched up. Maybe this is like not anything new, but I was excited that I figured it out. Um, if you just cut off a piece and you stretch it, it straightens out. I'm sure I'm not the first one to do it, but needless to say, it saved me a lot of, in the long run, a lot of money because I'm not throwing out garbage pieces now because I can straighten them right out. So that's a tip. Um, but you're going to cut about an inch and a half, two inch section. doesn't have to be crazy long. You start getting long, you are going to foul it up either way. And these waterlog pretty pretty heavily. So we're just, oops, uh, we're just doing something of this, this length. And I don't know whoever told me to... Uh, to ever cut off uh, the end in a, in a corner, or sorry, at an angle. Um, whoever told me that, I've stuck with it. So what we do is just kind of pull the hair back on it as best we can. And we're just going right to the hide itself. It's gonna be kind of hard to show, but I'm just cutting the very tip at an angle. A lot of people have said it just it swims straighter. Um, I've tried both and I, I can't tell the difference, but I figure if it makes a little bit of a difference, I mean, listen, we're selling them, they should be like that, but. I don't know if you can even see that. It's kind of an angle there. So, um, the next part I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my bodkin. I'm not even going to put this on camera because it's hard to redo, do everything. All I'm doing is poking a hole, and I'll show you it in a second where it is. I'm just poking a hole through the hide, um, just a, a little bit up, and I'll show you what I'll do with that here. So, pull that bodkin through. Next thing I'm going to do is just take the mono and put it through the hole. It's just gonna hang there for a second. Now, if we were doing these and actually like for an order, we'd be done already, but we're gonna kinda go slow with this. So all I'm gonna do is secure this right in, um, do a couple pinch wraps. Just make sure you, you have it all in there. Um, the big thing is make sure it sits on the, the hook straight. Um, you don't want it off to like one side. The second you do, it's just, it's just not going to be, not going to help you. Um, and then take that mono, flip it over, and then I'm going to tie it right back in. It's going to be a little hard because my fingers are probably blocking it a little bit, but I'm just going to tie it in. And it's just going to keep it from going left and right and wrapping around for the most part. It's, uh, I would say, it, I don't know, probably, uh, it probably um, lessens your amount of tangling up by, I don't know, 75, 80%. I, I very rarely get tangled up with it this way. Um, you know, sometimes I'll hook up to seaweed or something, which isn't unusual. We're going to cover up the wraps. Um, just keep that little loop at the end there. If I'm missing any questions, just let me know. I haven't actually been paying attention. All right, so you got the tail section on there. Next, because in like Anthony was talking, you like sparkle and flash, and if they're on the surface, I mean, there's a lot of commotion, a lot of stuff going on. The flash is always kind of nice. So I'm using the um, the uh, the headroom, the lateral lateral scale flash. It's uh, this is the super small stuff. It's like one sixty ninth, I guess, and it's an opal. Do they make other colors? Mm, I don't think they do in that really small yeah. stuff. So real small stuff, but this stuff is kind of neat. Um, I don't know. I use it all the time. I just take a handful of five or uh, uh pieces off I, I used to count them and now it's just it's a waste of time so i take a clump and uh 
wrap them over and then tie them right in. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. We're going to cut these off too so the ends don't have to be anything special. I don't want to go beyond the tail. Again, I, I don't want things fouling up. Um, the popper moves around a ton. Uh, the last thing I needed to do is just also foul up. So you just kind of cut them like that. So about the length of the tail. Um, maybe just a skosh uh, shorter. And then, because who doesn't like more flash, we're doing the some more flashaboo here. This is just a silver and turquoise mix. I don't know if it has a special color name, but um, same deal. Just take a little clump. You don't have to count them. It's not it's not science here. And uh, do the same exact thing. Just V wrap it around the thread, and then up and over. Well, I started my thread a little too far back there, but secure it right in. And uh, cut it. Oh, geez. <laughs> there we go. All right. And cut it to size. Um, so the next material we're using, it's really popular in the Northeast. I don't know if it's really popular anywhere else. It's called um, Bill's Body Braid. Um, it's kind of like for other folks, it's kind of like a Crelex material, sort of. Um, but it's it's a braid, uh, but not a round braid. It's a very flat braid. Um, the guy who had this. There's a famous pattern, which it's embarrassing. It's called the MP Shiner. It's just this stuff in gold. Um, it's a really popular pattern in New England, and um, they have a bunch of bazillion colors. For this one, we're using silver. You don't need a ton, but I'm going to cut off a, a little, a, quite a length, so I'm not really forcing myself to put a small amount on here. So, anyway, something like this is fine. We're only going to use a little bit of it. And just pinch wrap it on there, you know, a couple securing wraps. Oops, sorry. And then the kind of the big key here is I, you want, uh, and this isn't going to look beautiful. We're going to cover it up. It's going to look nice, but um, you don't. You want kind of a taper. If you have it all balled up, or if it, where your material drops off and stuff, it it shows up when you wrap it. So you want it to have a nice taper to it. Um, and. Uh, We'll try to do this slowly. Usually I would just whip it around, but make sure your flash is not getting all tangled up in the process. And yeah, I am just leaving my thread hanging here. Um, I'm gonna do a securing wrap. It's, yes, normally you could have it off to the side there, but we're gonna just keep doing this. All right, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple wraps behind it. And then a couple in front of it here, just get it all secured in. And then, not really happy with the way that flash should be laid out, but uh, before we do, we've got like two more steps, and then we'll put the head on. But before anything, I'm going to, um, I try to coat this. Like Anthony said, we're going after stripers, which, m mind you, have the sandpaper kind of like teeth. We're going after bluefish, though. Um, we have guys using them. Um, I know we have a guy using them for some pike. Um, we've got other things that are, you know, have teeth on them. And um, just trying to keep the bodies as dur durable as possible so you can actually, you know, use them again. Um, but uh, so I coated this with Solara as the, uh, the uh, bone dry as well. Just kind of all I use there. So bear with me while this cures for a second. But a lot of this is, we're going to hide some of this um, as well. We're going to um, finish up the body and then we're going to put the head on. So as long as we, um, as long as everything's kind of secured in there, it'll, it'll come out just nice. All right, so that's good there. So the last kind of part before you do the head is, I do on these, um, I put uh, this kind of dubbing on it. It's called, uh, let me get you a better color to look at. Um, it's uh, Magnum dubbing. If you can see that, it's by a guy named uh, Aaron Laterra. Aaron? Um, he's a guy from Pennsylvania, I think, and he makes tons of cool colors. And um, most of the time, he's posting horrible, horrible meals on Facebook that he eats, and I don't know how he's still alive. Um, but uh, he uh, he makes all kinds of cool dubbing colors. I probably have, I don't know, 30 different colors, and I have gallon bags of it and small bags. And But, um, I mean, he just makes all kinds of different fun stuff, so... Um, so anyway, since the top of this is going to be blue, any, uh, we're going to use 
This one's called Skeletor. He has all kinds of weird names too, like uh, Burnt Smurf. Um, I think he has one called Barf. A couple other weird colored names. Um, but we're just going to grab a small batch. It's, it is similar to the Laser Dub. It's longer. Um, I find this a little bit easier to work with. Um, uh, and he's got, a, like I said, he's got like a trillion colors. But just something like this. It's not going to be, we're not talking crazy amounts. I'm going to lay it right on top, right where we had stopped our thread. I'm going to pinch wrap it in. We're only going to do a couple wraps here. If you go crazy with the wraps, you start getting this big bulk in the back. And when it comes time to put the head on, um, it's kind of a pain. So uh, we're going to now do, so that was the top, obviously. So we're going to do the, uh, the bottom. So I'm going to do a pearl. Um, same stuff, just different color. So like something like that. And just tie it kind of in the middle. Same thing, pinch wrap it right on. And um, once you got that on there, it's just going to look like it's kind of a mess. At the end, everything gets brushed out too. Um, but we're going to uh, fold them both back. And then we're going to do just a couple wraps here to secure them in. It's one of those things that you do like a hundred times and eventually you'll, uh, you'll get it kind of the way you want it. Um, so you end up with a nub here, but like I said, if you had twice that amount, you're talking a big kind of bulbous end to it. You don't want that. Um, on the very last thing I do, I actually do use laser dub because I have this particular color and it's shorter that I need, that I want. This is, uh, sorry, this is the Senyo's laser dub in red. Um, and we're talking like a really small clump of it here. So do that. And I'm just going to tie it right in. It's just going to be like a, a, a bleeding spot or a hot spot or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm just going to tie that actually in front of that clump there. Fold it right over and just secure it in. That's going to be our body for the most part here. The only thing we have to do now is brush it out. So you're going to bring the thread wraps up forward. I'm going to flip it over. I do a couple interspace things. And one thing, I just saw someone do this uh, when we first started. It just kind of was uh, good timing. They put out like a bump in here. Um, it's more of a, it's, I don't know if you'd call it a thread dam, but it's just another, almost like you're creating two little wells in here between the, I don't know if you can actually see that, but there's like a well here and a well there. So when I put the, um, the uh, cement in to actually secure the head on there, um, it just adds more holding power. So I'm going to cut that right off. This all gets hidden, so it doesn't actually have to be pretty. Thank God. Um, and the only other thing I do here before I get the head on, and I'm just going to do it on my lap, I um, I take the whole fly and I'll end up brushing it out with a, your typical tap brush or something. Um, I just do it on my shorts or my pants or whatever and uh, just get the fibers kind of going all in the right direction. So give me half a sec. Also gets rid of any of the loose ones that I didn't actually secure in. Um, so that's getting kind of to where we need to be. Um, if you get some of these wild ones on here, uh, which you tend to at times, just even the static electricity will kind of do it. Got it all over me already. Um, I'll trim up a couple of the, like, the loose ends, but once they get packaged up and the head's on there, they, they kind of calm down too. So, All right. All right, so that's our body on there with the zonker strip, the Latera's dubbing, some of the laser dub flash and the Bill's body braid. Um, the next part's actually attaching the head onto it. Um, so Britt was asking about ruining the finish on it. Um, if you do it right, and you do it slowly, which I learned the hard way, like everyone, um, you should, shouldn't have too many problems. You should be able to insert the bodkin, which I'm going to show you, kind of quickly, but not, uh, not too fast, and you won't actually get, um, you won't have it, like, make this huge hole and all this stuff. So the best tool... Um, and it's great for starting fires outside in like your fire pit is a butane torch. I'm sure other people have other reasons. Um, and I use a bodkin. This is something that a bunch of people are doing. Um, and it's relatively easy. So we're essentially doing this. And we're just heating up the bodkin. You don't have to do it forever. Just kind of get it hot. And then before it cools off, you want to insert it right in the, uh, the back of the head. And when I do them, um, I put that toothpick in the back when I airbrush them, that hole, I try to center it up where I want it to so I can kind of just 
put this in the same spot and should kind of even out. So now that that's on there, we're going to still do it one more time. Um, so I'm going to heat this up while the head's hanging out there. And then we're going to pull it off semi-slow because we want to actually make sure the head... And thank God you guys can't smell this stuff. is horrible to smell. Melted rubbers or uh, foam is disgusting. Sorry, Anthony. So we're not going with the crazy big head. It will for form on there. It, it's still clean. I mean, there's no... It, oh, let's see if I can do that better. It's not... The only damage to this finish is just that one hole. It's not like spread out. It didn't crack or, or go anywhere. So... Um, so we're going to do that and the last part here, um, and again, this is something you have to do kind of quick because once it sets your, your hose to so make sure it's right, um, we're going to put some Zappa Gap right on here. And sometimes it leaks a tad down there, but it's going to capture in the back. I'm going to push it right on. And if I measured it right, it should, it should sit just fine. The only last thing is make sure it's actually straight on the hook. There's a pile of them somewhere that are all crooked because I didn't do that. So, um, but you should see that the the eyes just just right on the outside there. It doesn't. Uh, it's not too far. It's not too long. Um, as far as the back goes, the back is coated on this. Someone had asked that earlier. Um, you can't really see it, but the body fits right into the back. Um, if you wanted to get real fancy, you could open up that back even more and get get this further in. But the gap. Oh, there's the camera. The gap on this is is about where you want it. If I had this any forward you'd be running out of room we have this kind of nice angle between the hook and the head itself and it makes for more more hookups so um if you push this back more you'd start running into issues the same concept goes for pretty much any of the heads that i that i do um it's the same concept measuring it out putting them on after um anthony's got it kind of made where he's got the hook into the body and um goes from there these are um a little bit more moving parts on it, uh, but at the end of the day, the same same result. I mean, the, the flies create all kinds of action, and, um, and this is a medium one. Um, they make bigger ones, so um, so yeah. So that's uh, that's that one. And um, he, you were talking about lines earlier. I, I always use an outbound short. It's it's a Rio one, um, and that I can throw anything from the extra large ones right down to the small ones and. Um, we fish 99% on the ocean and, um, I've been happy with it. I haven't had any complaints from my end. And, and most of the people that ask, we recommend a handful of them. And, um, and so far I haven't had any real feedback that it hasn't worked out for them. So, but, um, that's all I got. What do you have? Yeah. No, I just, uh, thank Norboys for the opportunity for this. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. we were supposed to do trivia questions. Someone, uh, Casey mentioned it and I guess they're doing some, there are 33 people on here. I guess they're doing uh, a couple shirt giveaways. So we're supposed to ask some trivia questions. Um, since I'm not very prepared, I came up with one, and you probably have to Google it, just as a hint. Uh, my one question is, where was the record bluefish caught? The world record bluefish. Where was it caught? I don't care about the weight, but the weight's cool, though. But just curious, what state was it caught in? It is in the U.S., um, and I can tell you it's on the eastern seaboard if it helps out. But if someone answers where the largest bluefish was caught, um, I think they get a shirt. Or I made that up, and I'm going to owe someone a shirt. <laughs> and uh, mine is the, uh, I guess the first person who uh, can answer who invented the Beastmaster General fly uh, gets a shirt. <laughs> Beastmaster General? Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, so they say the first to respond to the correct answer will win. Okay, sure. No, Scott. <laughs> By the way, Scott that just commented is from, uh, the Bahamas, and he's the one catching tarpon, or was catching tarpon on some of ours. It was pretty cool. Oh, very good. A couple guys got it. Cool. All right, well, I don't know. I'll let Norvice figure that out. But, uh, but yeah, thank you to Norvice for letting us, uh, um, yeah, kind of share this. It's been a lot of fun. It's uh, We didn't have any idea that it was actually going to take off the way it did. And before you know it, Anthony have spent uh, the primary of the uh, the uh, majority of our this year in our basements, uh, thanks to that. Um, but it's been it's been fun. So <laughs> great fun. <Yeah. laughs> but uh, yeah, so thank you. And if there's other questions, we'll try to answer them as we go along, or we'll get uh, we'll get the uh, the tape and we'll answer them on the side. So, um, but yeah. Is that it? Yeah, I guess so. And uh yeah, get uh 
Try to get oh, yeah. as many people into doing this as they can. And uh, if uh, you guys have any custom popper you know, requests, we, uh, we're happy to uh, fill those as well. So Yeah, and I'm supposed to tell everybody, again, something I completely forgot to do. Um, yeah, so Tim and uh, Braden are going to be in uh, Waynesville, North Carolina. Uh, and that's uh, coming up this Saturday, the 16th. Um, and it's going to be for a demo day for Norvice, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and that's at uh, the, <laughs> I've said this 10 times, I still think I get it wrong, Tuckasegi Fly Shop. Tuckasegi Fly Shop. Um, but yeah, if you don't tie on a Norvice, I, I do recommend it. I spent quite a bit of time working at a fly shop and never actually got my hands on them a lot, even though they sold them. And I, I think it's awesome. I, I And I don't say that lightly. I mean, I've got to use a lot of them. And this one is, uh, I, I'll probably never go to anything else. I think it's awesome. I was close on it. I even had the pronunciation spelled out for me, and I got it wrong. Maybe it's from being from Maine. Um, but, uh, but no, I, I highly recommend them. I can't say enough things, uh, nice things about them. Um, and the people there, I've asked plenty of questions, and, and they're uh, they're all over, um, all over it. And uh, it's it's nice to see. So um, definitely thumbs up to them. And uh, their bobbins, I use those also. I've got a few of them. And um, yeah, it's it's hard to go to anything else. Actually, I gave my last one away. So. Um, not Bob and my other vice. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, but thank you guys. It was yeah. fun being here and, um, yeah, maybe we'll get to do it again this winter or something. Thanks so, guys. Cool. See you guys.